Thank you all for being here this evening. We've got a wonderful presentation for you here. Today's session will provide you with a tried and true formula for closing the sale, allowing a guest to become a member of your Toastmasters Club. Today's presentation will be given by Jeff Maroud. Jeff has been an integrated circuit designer, design engineer at Microchip Technology Semiconductor and a distinguished Toastmaster the highest award offered by Toastmaster. He has been a Toastmaster for more than 20 years, giving humorous speeches, inspirational speeches, as well as speeches about everyday people. Please join me in welcoming Jeff Maroud, who will give us some ideas about closing the sale. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Mike, very much. We all love our Toastmasters clubs. Do you love your club? I know I do, and I'm a member of four of them. <laughs> so, but one thing we probably all have in common is we probably need more members in whatever club we're in. Now we have more than 150 clubs here in the state of Arizona, and only a handful of clubs really don't need more members. They have plenty of members. In fact, a couple have a waiting list for members. That's a wonderful place to be in if you're a Toastmaster. But most people struggle with membership in their clubs. And the, the question is, how do we improve our membership? Now I can tell you some, some pointers that may help you along. I've been a club coach several times. And usually when I am a club coach, I'm going into a club with 12 or fewer members. And the first thing I do is observe, listen and observe. Why would I do that? Because the first thing I need to know is, is this a club that's vibrant, that has good meetings, where people like each other, and where they're willing to make a few changes. That's the important part. Because if you're down in members like that, probably there's something that needs to change and we have to find out what it is. So one of the first things you do is you, if they're having good meetings, you want to move into, let's bring in guests. So you bring in guests and we know not every guest is going to become a member. But in Toastmasters meetings, a guest makes a world of difference. It adds energy to the group. And everyone seems to enjoy having guests. But it's important to plan ahead of time. Before that guest walks in the door or tunes in on a screen via the internet, you need to have a procedure in place. In other words, someone in that class should be able to sit with that guest if you're meeting in person. If you're meeting online, you have to greet them and send friendly chats to that particular guest. All these things are good. That helps the guest to enjoy the meeting. Now, guests come from many different places. Some people, some members are just, they have a magnetic personality and they bring in lots of guests, which is wonderful. Most of us don't have that kind of charm, but we do have friends. And one of the best ways to bring in a guest is to say, I'm giving a speech this upcoming Wednesday. I wonder if you could tune into my Toastmasters Club and look at my speech and maybe give me a few pointers. And that gets them in as a guest. Other guests come because they wanted to learn something Either they need to develop their speaking skills as part of their job, or they want to de develop their leadership skills, or they want to relate better to other people. So they'll contact World Headquarters. Somewhere, somehow, they heard about Toastmasters, and they contacted World Headquarters, and World Headquarters then sent an email to your club leaders, your, your club officers, and one of them 
will act on that. Hopefully, you know ahead of time who's going to get that and act on it. And they'll invite that guest to their club. If it's an in-person club, they'll invite them to the meeting area, give them the time and the location, and be ready to welcome them. If it's an online club, like many of us have now, you'll send the link and maybe some information about the club that will entice them to come as a guest. I know I was in an online club last night and we had three guests, three guests who referred by world headquarters. Now, why would a guest go through the trouble of contacting world headquarters and then being invited actually go online to attend a meeting? It's because they want something from Toastmasters. They want to speak better. They want to speak in front of a crowd or they need to find a way to organize meetings. They have some purpose in joining Toastmasters. And that's part of closing the sale if you're a club. You want to find out that purpose and address it. And let them know that this club can actually fulfill that purpose that they have. Now let's give a few demonstrations of what happens in a normal club. At the end of the meeting, they ask the club for comments. So Nancy Duckett, you've been a one-time guest. Maybe it was a while ago, but can you tell us how you felt about that meeting? And what did you tell the meeting members at that time? Okay, Jeff, could you repeat that? Kind of the meeting that I attended as a guest or? Yes, you attended as a guest at one time and decided to join Toastmasters. But the, before you joined, they asked you how you felt about the meeting. So what was your reply? Oh, my well, reply was I enjoyed the meeting. Everyone was very friendly, but I wasn't sure whether I wanted to pursue joining the meeting, uh, joining the club. I wanted to check it out a little more, maybe do a little more research, learn a little more about the, the club and what happens in a meeting. Okay, that's, that's a pretty typical response. If you've been in Toastmasters for a while, that is pretty typical of what you'd hear from a guest. So what does the club do after that? Well, in, in a club, the Toastmaster or the presiding officer, or maybe even the sergeant at arms will be there and address what that guest comments were. And here's one example of what, what a, an officer might say. And I've heard this many times before. Thanks for being our guest, Nancy. You can come as a guest for as long as you want. Now, are you motivated to join, Nancy? <laughs> what that tells me is I could put it off for a while, that it's perfectly okay for me to just visit, but not make a commitment. That's exactly right. In fact, there are other guests this, that draw a different conclusion. I've heard it when guests heard that and started thinking, well, they want me only as a guest. They don't think I'm good enough to join their club. Now, is that person likely to join the club? Probably not, probably not. That's one mistake the clubs make. That, and it's a common mistake. It's not, not something you want to say if you're a club, especially if you're a club officer. Let's get back to a second example. Perhaps you've seen this or heard this. You're in a club, you've had a good club meeting and you have a guest or you have guests in that club. And so you ask for the comment and maybe they give a comment similar to what Nancy did. So they're all excited. And the president of the club says, would you like to join our club next month? You can save $7 and 50 cents. What do you think of that particular approach? Does anybody have any opinions? You think you're gonna close the sale on that approach? I hear a lot of 
Heads nodding. No, not. no. <laughs> Go ahead. You can speak up, Mike. <laughs> I would say it's probably not because when you're closing the sale, you always assume the sale. You always assume the sale. <clears throat> Have you ever walked into a McDonald's? Let's say you order a, a meal, a burger, fries, and a drink. What does the person behind the counter say? Would you like would you like a large fry with that? That's what they say. They ever say, oh, if you come back in a few days, we're having a sale, you can save a dollar. Does anybody ever say that? No, no, they don't. Because you walk in there, you're hungry, you want something to eat, you want to eat it now. So you have a need that needs to be satisfied right now. If someone walks into your Toastmaster club and identifies a need, they're, they're there for a reason. They want to satisfy that need now. And Toastmasters is such a wonderful, great idea. When you think about it, where else would they go for help? They might go to a community college, sign up for a semester. It's going to cost them hundreds of dollars not only in tuition, but also materials. So, it, so you compare those rates, which club is the better bargain? Which choice saves money and yet gives you that constant reinforcement every week, if you meet every week? It's Toastmasters. And if they have a need, you need to basically satisfy that need right away. Because if you don't, basically people are just going to find a, a reason not to join your club, quite frankly. There's no urgency there on their part. So maybe let's try it again. Let's suppose we have someone else who's a member. Would anyone else like to, to pretend to be a guest for this particular demonstration? Okay, Tagore. I'll be the guest. Tagore beat you to it, Colleen. Sorry. <laughs> so, Tagore, you're the guest. What did you think of a, the, our meeting tonight? Quite interesting. I think it's going to help me. But I am so nervous. and I don't think, um, do you think you can help me? I, I have so many souls and arms. I, I feel nervous. My anxiety is at the top level. Is this the correct club to do that? Can I work on this? Well, Tagore, do you think do you think it would help if you if you gave speeches on a regular basis with this club, getting feedback from members, giving you pointers on how to improve your speaking rate and how to be calmer as you give a speech? Do you think that might help you? What did you think of the structure? Did you think it it was well organized. I love the way the meetings are taken. Do you think, in this it, would mm -hmm. Do you think it would help you and your leadership skills if you knew how to organize and conduct an efficient meeting at work? Definitely. Definitely. So do you think impromptu speaking at work would help you on the job? For sure. Every time you need to work and talk to your supervisors and your people and be prepared for the table topics is like the impromptu conversation you always need to have. Yes. So if you would like to improve your speaking skills, if you would like to improve your impromptu speaking skills and your skills at running an efficient meeting, would you like any help in filling out an application to join this club? But well, I still have a question, especially for me that I am my, this is my second language. How Toastmaster is going to help me to get more vocabulary and improve my pronunciation? That's what is my main objective, <laughs> being a, a manager in another country. Oh, yes. We have a lot of people in this country from other countries that have that same problem. And we can help you. We can help you by giving you feedback on how you pronounce your words. Uh, 
We help you with your vocabulary because we have a word of the day at every meeting, just like we had at the meeting you had just attended. And so you'll build your vocabulary over time. You'll speak and you'll speak better each time because you're getting help both written and oral feedback, which will help you get better for your next speech and the speech after that and the speech after that. And after a series of speeches, you'll find that you're more confident. You're less nervous. As a matter of fact, you'll learn how to control your nervousness to make your speaking even better. So with all of those benefits, would you like to, any help filling out an application form to join this tonight? I'm truly interested to do that. Okay, we'll be glad to send you a form and um, I will call you and make sure that you everything's going smoothly and we'll be glad to accept you into this club. And I think you'll enjoy being a Toastmaster. Now, from the rest of our audience, how did that third response go? Would, if you were a guest, would you be sold on that particular response? Would you close the sale and join the club? Yes, I would. You would. Definitely. Okay. I would. I would hope because you're all Toastmasters. I'd hope that worked for you whenever you joined your first club, or something like it worked for you. It's. I think inviting a guest to join basically doesn't have to be any high pressure thing. It doesn't have to be a sense of urgency from the club. Basically just invite, tell them where you're willing to help them fill out an application to join. And if you have any questions about the cost, you can answer the cost because the officer should be well-versed in handling the cost and what the cost of Toastmasters is. It's very simple. There's a one-time joining fee. There's a prorated fee if you join in this month, for example, and then every six months we renew our dues. It's that simple and the cost is very low. You can't, do it, you can't get any better cost anywhere in the world except at a Toastmaster meeting. So that's, that's a great way to get people to join. First of all, you just give them questions that they answer yes to. Did you notice in the dialogue I had with, with, with Tagore, he gave a yes answer to each of the three questions I asked him. And then I asked him if he would like help. Now, when a guest answers a question three times and then you give him a yes or no question after that, the logical, most people will continue to answer yes. The reason is they, they answered yes to the logic behind the fact that they need these skills to join Toastmasters. So they're willing to answer the yes to the question of the application. Now you have to follow up. You follow up and you basically work with them in filling out that application understand what they need to do. But further, your vice president of membership should also give them an onboarding once they join and encourage them to get on the pathway one of the paths that Toastmasters has out of 11, just basically you buddy up with them and show them what they knew, need to do. What is the next step? You take the survey, you choose a path, you get started on Toastmasters pathways. It's just really that simple. And as you go in, on Toastmasters, you get better and better and you set goals. It's very important for the club to understand what each person's goals is so they can meet that goal. It's, that's where it's important for your vice president of education to schedule them where they need to and to encourage them as all the members should be encouraging. Are there any questions about that? Okay, so we're scheduled a Q&A session for tw 20 minutes, I believe. So if you have any questions at all, now's a good time. Um, Jeff, I don't have a question, but I think that the, um, the offer of a phone call to help with filling out the application form is a really good opportunity to help reinforce joining the club and offering that help. 
Sometimes you're just handed an application. Well, I'll turn in that application and you can join. But that personal attention and kind of almost a hand-holding, I think, helps to cinch the sale. It does. I'm a great believer in hand-holding, not just for guests, but for Toastmasters. We have several Toastmasters out there in clubs tonight that simply are afraid to go online and start pathways. And it's really vital for a club to do a little hand-holding, walk them through getting on board with pathways. If you need to, go visit them at their house, sit, with the, sit next to them and make sure that they understand, make it easy for them to follow on that pathways and get started in Toastmasters. Are there any other questions? Colleen's got her hand up, Jeff. Okay. Yeah. If we can go to a to a view, I, I, that's me. I went to a gallery view. Now I can see you when you raise your hand. Okay, Colleen. Question. It's kind of a question is something that I know Think Tank does, and I knew the damn good speakers used to do that as well. Is let the newer people that come in know they're going to have a mentor assigned to them someone to hold their hand, to guide them, not only through pathways, but through leadership roles on every step of the way. And we also try to give them a couple meetings to get to know who's who in the zoo, if I want to say it that way, to mm -hmm. have some input into who their mentor would be. Right? Don't we kind of, how do we get other clubs to know that I've been visiting 65 clubs because I turned 65 this year. I know it's a crazy <laughs> goal, but I've seen so many clubs that there's no mentorship programs. How do we endorse that more? Well, I think it needs to be said at TLI. I think the, the smart clubs do it because it's smart. Because if you want to retain your members, they need to have someone they can confide in, someone they can go to with questions. So if someone sponsored that member, then the sponsor should be that person. But if you're the vice president of education or president of a club, by all means, let them, let them know that they can have a mentor. You will work with them to get a mentor. What I like to do is when a member joins, if they're new to Toastmasters and don't know people that are already in the club, I tell, give it a couple of weeks, attend some meetings, and then if there's someone you would like to be your mentor, you can approach them yourself, or if you prefer, I will, I will approach that person for you. And you can have a mentor relationship, someone to go to, someone to practice in front of, for your icebreaker or any other speech, and someone to ask questions about Toastmasters, what the organization is and how things are done. So that's that's a vital. That's how you get, once you want to keep members going and growing. Anyone else? But all I can say is because this audience may be limited. Don't be afraid to tell other club officers in other clubs about mentoring. Be a champion. Yes, Shelly. I raised my hand. Thank you very much, sir. And I have to piggyback what Colleen said, because I know when I have guests at meetings, when I was president of things, one of, and as vice president of education, one thing that I talk to them about is I want to know, I, I talk about the onboarding that I do. And then I talk about, I want to know what your goals are so I can get you some, a mentor that can help you get to those goals. Because for me, it's very important. I floundered for a year and a half before I found my mentor because nobody asked me that important question, what my goals were. And that is very important because if you don't ask that question when they join, they're going to leave. They may not join or they may join and they may leave in a year because nobody helped them. Yeah. That's my sale that I give every time I have a guest come to a meeting. 
That's what I told them. So when I, I, would, I would say the important points that we've covered here is number one, when you have that guest, don't let them leave without asking them to join. Ask them to join. If it's in person, give them an application in their hands. Ask them to join in any case. You can follow up with, with an application online for online clubs. The other thing is, yes, Edwin, now we got a lot of people wanting to <laughs> voice their opinions. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Edwin. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. I, I found a very good way to help people join the clubs or on the fence of joining the club. Let them know when they give they do join the club to be a, they want to give a speech. You, you don't have to just think of what to speak about. Think about your passion. Speak about things that you like that, that you're comfortable with. These this is a good sales pitch to get people to join your club. Because most people who come to Toastmasters, they when they the first thing they say, I want to learn how to speak better. And then they're like, well, I don't know what to speak about. So when I when I mentor somebody, they say, well, I don't know what to speak about. Course is basically on what the assignment is. You can talk about anything under the sun. I remember when I first joined Toastmasters and I gave my first speech, my mentor was like, I was like, I went to my mentor and said, what can I speak about? He says, well, what you love to talk about the most? Said, well, I thought you talk about where I came from. And I gave a, I did my whole first legacy program speaking about where I came from to get my first DT. Every speech was about New York City. <laughs> and time and, and just went and got, and got comfortable. And then when I when I started mentoring people, I told them, speak about what you love. You love fishing? You can do a whole series on fishing. You love talk about sports? Do a whole series on sports. Whatever you comfortable with, this is what this will help them feel. They want to join because you're making it seem like it's going to be an easy process for them. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. When I worked for Motorola, there was a fellow that always wanted to schedule to speak before he had to give a presentation to, to the customer or to upper management. And he would give that speech in front of the Toastmasters Club before he gave it where the, his money was on the line, his job was on the line. So that's one example of that as well. Now, Tagore, you had your hand up. Did you have a question? I even think Nancy was first. Okay. No, actually, He's, go ahead, Tagore. I, I think your hand was up before. Okay, no worries. I have always been having the question. So I've been seeing people that um, they go on the first session, and once they see that um, we are asking them if they are interested, they need to fill out the, the form. They don't come back. So what is the correct way to tell them they are we, they, we are okay if they need to have maybe one or two because maybe that specific session they were not feeling all the benefits from Toastmaster without telling them exactly you can come every time you want being a guest. What is the correct way to approach that and maybe give a second opportunity so they can see other people participating? Well, well, there may be different answers to that, but for me, it's you're welcome to come as a guest for three meetings. Okay. Three meetings. Then you have to decide. And Nancy. One thing that I found is kind of matching existing club members with the guests. What I found is that sometimes just pairing some uh, members based on whether it's the workplace, their interests, or their, uh, or kind of what they maybe it's even an age range situation, but it's really talking to that guest and not just saying, oh, we have a guest and you bring them in and, and you have them you know, join in the meeting and give them an application, but really to find out who they are and what, what do they want out of Toastmasters? Why did they uh, come to attend the meeting? 
What do they know about Toastmasters? And really pairing them. When we were meeting in person, often it was that other, the existing Toastmaster that you sat a guest, sat down next to the guest to kind of help them through the agenda. And then you build that relationship and that's the person that helps bring the member into the club and finally fill out the application. And then after that, it's rather than a mentor, some folks may not be that comfortable with a mentor, but they might be interested in a buddy. Somebody that you work alongside mm -hmm. with and say, okay, I'm working through level one and how about you? And you're, you're kind of challenging each other to complete that level, but it helps to keep that momentum going. So sometimes it's about perhaps a buddy or a mentor could even be a buddy, but really looking at maybe different terminology, but primarily finding out why that individual even sought out a Toastmasters club and what is their goal. I think that's something that would be good to focus on. That's an excellent point. I think I like the buddy idea because how you say something is probably as, as important as what you have to say. And using the right terms is really a, makes a big difference in terms of closing the sale. Colleen, your hand goes up before Shelly's. <laughs> Well, I was just going to piggyback on what everybody's saying. One of the clubs when I first joined, and I'm going to age myself here, in 1994 in Watertown, South Dakota, was a club where the past president was the person who overseen the mentorship program for the club. They helped get those people together and had training sessions once every other month just to talk to them about how's it going? Are you connecting? Do you need help? And the only thing I saw they really dropped the ball on is we mentor through leadership roles, speeches, all the roles that we have. But then I was told, oh, you're going to run the club contest next year. I had no clue what I was doing. I mean, I read that book as best I could. But don't drop that mentorship ball. You <laughs> People that haven't taken or done something like that, taken or done, there's some great grammar. <laughs> That coaching really goes on through the lifetime. I don't care how long I've been a Toastmaster, I still reach out to my coaches. And they're right, Nancy. Huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good choice, too. <laughs> okay, Shelly. Thank you. I know when I first joined Unity Speakers, Don Causing sat down with me after the meeting, told me about the club and because I was already a Toastmaster. But when I became an officer, he taught me to do as Nancy said, have a guest sit by a seasoned Toastmaster or a buddy in the club so they can go over the agenda and if they have questions, they can ask. Now that we're in this environment, how do we do that in this environment? Because it's very hard to get, how do you buddy up in this environment? Because you can't do that in this environment. Do you have any suggestions? I think That's Jeff easy. mentioned that. He mentioned yeah. when you have a guest, communicate with that guest via the chat. Communicate via a direct chat. Might be one approach in the Zoom environment. And as president of a club that I always say, you're always welcome to contact me and I'll answer your questions or give, give you whatever help you want. And that's really an officer's responsibility. It should be emphasized at Toastmasters Leadership Institute. Any other questions? Well, I wanna thank you all for joining. Mike has this a question for you. Mike, yes, Mike. Thank you very much, Jeff. To answer the question on how do you do that in this Zoom environment, there are several clubs, a number of clubs that are doing hybrid meetings. I belong to two of them where some of the people will come in person, some of them will come via Zoom. And it's all a matter of everyone is treated equally. On Zoom, it's even easier than doing it in person, believe it or not. 
anybody can start a Zoom meeting, invite somebody to it and share a screen. So for example, if you are mentoring somebody on how to log into the Toastmasters website, you start the Zoom session, they share their screen, you have them go to toastmasters.org and walk them through the entire process. You're not showing them on your screen and typing stuff in, they're actually physically doing it. That gives people a lot of confidence that they can go ahead and do this. When they, they're ready to do their first speech or their second speech, or they have questions on a speech, I'll jump on a Zoom session with them, have them share out their screen, and we'll go and we'll look at that particular project. They'll say, what, what, part of the, what, what of this is causing you problems? What doesn't make sense to you? I said, what I, what I will do once I figured out what's not making sense to you is I'm going to tell Toastmasters International this is one of the issues that I'm seeing with this particular project in Pathways, or the people are not understanding this particular thing. Toastmasters is all about evaluation, about that feedback. And Toastmasters International is exactly the same. They need that feedback. But doing it, I mean, Jeff talked about going to their house, sitting down next to them and doing it. You can do that virtually as well. Get into the Zoom meeting, and sit there and watch exactly what it is that they are doing on their screen. Because a lot of times when they do that, you'll say, oh, I can see what your issue is. You actually need to be doing this and not that. But not having to have, have them allow you into their space as people are still mm -hmm. a bit leery of allowing people too close to them unless they're part of their cohort. Thank you, Jeff. Hey, you're welcome. It's a great suggestion. Great suggestion. So I want to thank you all for being here and contributing. And I hope that in each of your clubs, you'll take something from this particular session and use it to improve your club, to welcome guests and to convert them into members by closing the sale. I want everyone to have a good evening. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thanks for that wonderful presentation. This is the first of four sessions that we will be having every Friday, starting at 6.30. I invite all of you to come back next week at 6.30 when we will be having a panel discussion. See you all next week. <laughs>